Again, thank you for joining us. We hope that you did enjoy that conversation, the bounce ride. And it's 3 FM sunrise. Certainly, you just have to go on to the various um, social media handles or 3 FM, you get the latest update. But just um, 12 hours after all the Ranko in Parliament were here to take a critical uh, look at it before the weekend. And you know that uh, apart from all the bulletins we have tomorrow, we crown it in the morning with um, the key point where everybody will be on display. Let me say good morning to uh, Ellis Couture for my outfit, as always, um, doing great work with great kaftans and then also a male outfit if you want them located in Tema Community 1, Side 3. Elizabeth, thank you for always having my back. Let me say good morning to some great people who are um, good watchers of this show and, and tell you that today we're giving over... 40,000 Ghana cities. Actually, according to Cash Money Cookie, who got back a bit under the weather but decided to sacrifice her time to come today because of the love that um, she has for me as well as all of you so that I don't uh, become only the lone ranger on the show and to make sure she gives direction to Cash our staff 439 has. She has decided, alongside the organizers and the producers of the show, that Cash out today they're going to give 50,000 Ghana cities, so it's going to come in the draws, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 2,000, 3,000, going to split it in that order for you. All you need to do is to make sure that when you dial star 439 hash, you have to choose option 8. You're choosing option 8 today because it is the mega jackpot. So the mega jackpot uh, for which we're entering the fourth week has seen those who are the many winners winning in excess, 30,000 for the first week, 40,000 for the second week and uh, third week. And today we're making it 50,000 Ghana cities. But we can't do that without your cooperation. So let's have some great time and make sure we push this as well. So stick as many tickets as you can, increase your chances of winning and tell everybody that despite all the difficulties you're facing, uh, whether you can't pay your bills, etc., when you win cash out, you're able to get your wins into your mobile money account. But let me just introduce our guest for the morning. I have Alhaji Fuseni Isa. Good morning to you, Alhaji. Good morning, Roland. Yeah, former morning, member of Roland. parliament. Okankwe. North. Okay, in Queen North as always. I say good morning to your viewers as well. Great. Great to have you back. Ah, good to, good uh, to see you as always and uh, good to be on your side. I'm grateful, my brother. And then also, Abraham Amaliba is a legal practitioner in good standing. <laughs> he is the director for the committee that tends to do the negotiations or uh, uh, how do you call it? Arbitration and all that for the NDC. Conflict so resolution. Conf conflict resolution. So he, uh, he, he uses a lot of ADR tools, <laughs> alternative dispute resolution tools to be able to uh, resolve disputes, etc. Uh, he was not able to resolve the independent candidate issue at Amemfi Central. Exactly what I want. He's to one resolve. of the, the three, uh, the four who are part of the Buhaha currently in Parliament. <laughs> Abraham Maliba, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Let me say this. Look, the Attorney General this week addressed lawyers, oh, this, public, this sector, public sector lawyers, you know, and then said that um, the General Legal Council should uh, clamp down heavily on lawyers who criticize the Supreme Court or judges. I think I read that. Yes. You read that, you read that. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to say that look at who, who is talking about uh, uh, clamping down on lawyers who speak carelessly. This is an Attorney General. Who? Who disagreed? Who? This is an attorney general. And Who? everybody is entitled this, to disagree. This is an attorney general. And I don't, take, I don't take advice from an owner of a brothel. Look, this is an attorney general. This is what he said. On the air, the bus. The, 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 the air bus scandal. No, no, the distance. The, the investigation. The ambulance case saga. When the court of appeal ruled against him, this is how he described the ruling. He described the ruling as perverse. And when they say something is perverse, it means unreasonable, perverse, grossly unfair, and erroneous. Is this not an attack on the judiciary? And so, if, oh, yeah, if, 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 this is an attack on the judiciary, and if anybody is to be invited to the General Legal Council as his suggestion, it should be him first, because 
when you listen to the tape of Jakpa, all the things he said there were damning, and no attorney general has ever coached a witness to go to court and lie. But that was so, that tape authentic. So I, th I think I think that the attorney general must not be must, must not must Jack not be engaging in new laws. An attorney general should rise above all these things and not be uh, uh, engaging in new laws. Anytime he speaks, he's going into the the, the, the ditch. I think that he must he must behave as, like, like an attorney general. But he's ahead of the bow. You're also but he's misbehaving. He's misbehaving. Lawyer Jantua. Lawyer Kwame Jantua. Good, good morning. How are you? I'm well. Good. good I hope morning everything is good. Mm. Everything is fine. Okay. I'm breathing. All right. Let's do a recollection. All that transpired in Parliament, and then we'll end with some good insights. What come on board? Who made the request have not shown up, and in fact, there's no other paper for today because the business committee could not meet. It is not advisable to be adjourning from day to day. And so I'll proceed once more to adjourn the meeting indefinitely. Let me say that we are extremely disappointed in the MPP Minority Caucus. For first, triggering a recall of parliament under Article 1123 and Order 53 of our standing orders and failed to show up. Two, we left our busy shadow, suspended our campaigns and reported to duty this morning only to see that the MPP members of parliament who actually recalled parliament, we noticed that they failed to show up. This morning at about seven o'clock, we showed up at the business committee meeting on the sixth floor only to notice that the MPP members of the committee once again failed to show up at the business committee. I personally called the committee clerk and I was informed that she's out of the jurisdiction and no one has reached out to him, to, pro to, to her, to program the business of the day. I was worried and reach out also to the MPP side and to have an indication as to what their plan is. No one responded. I am deeply worried and deeply concerned that the very people that requested for parliament to be recalled failed to show up. Clearly what we are seeing here is an abuse of the constitution and the standing orders of Ghana's parliament. What Mr. Speaker did today amount to supervising chaos and bringing the image of democracy to disrepute. The NDC is on a warpath. They want confusion in this country. They want lawlessness in this country. And all these are being supervised by Mr. Speaker. We look forward to engaging Mr. Speaker in the next few hours and days. We we, we pray that he does the needful. If he doesn't do the needful, we will continue to rely on the law to get the right things done. To get understanding from the speaker. So we are at the caucus meeting and maybe I will admit that it took so long. But that is even allowed in parliamentary culture. I engaged Honorable Abuja and told the minister, oh, then you made a mistake. You should have informed the speaker that you were at the caucus meeting. The speaker didn't do, which I cannot defend because I'm not part of the leadership. And I'm sure he, he's right. I'm sure if my leaders have informed the speaker that we're holding a meeting, and we'll be back. Definitely, he would have waited. So, you know, Ken, it was the onus was also on the so-called majority leaders to inform the speaker, where are your colleagues? And he will tell them they are in caucus. They want to tell her that nobody knew that we're having a caucus meeting. Well, he can be a Pimenides and sit on the fence 
because even if he knows, and once there's no official communication, I can pretend I didn't know. That one day, I can pretend that I didn't know. Yeah, that's the that's the problem. I've, I've posed that question because I entered the chamber, and I saw I saw NDC occupying MPP seats. So I just had to leave. I told the leader and the leadership, the two whips and deputy majority leader, that we should go back. And if you join us on Facebook, please make sure you share the stream as well. And let me say good morning to a number of you as well who have joined us. And um, Alhaji, what do you make of this? Uh, as a former member of parliament, you're a big stakeholder in all this. More so, your experience comes to bear. Roland, I, I want to say a good morning to you again and a good morning to my uh, fellow panelists. Uh, mm -hmm. I've not been here in a while, but it's always good to, to be back. And a, a very big good morning to your viewers this morning. I am very uncomfortable with what is happening in Parliament. And I think that um, in the annals of um, our democratic history, the eighth Parliament is proven to be a Parliament that has not been up to the task given mm. to them. Mm. Um, in the eighth Parliament, we've seen too many the theoretical performances. Mm about gaining a political advantage, especially from the minority group. Because of the closeness and the numbers uh, we have in parliament. And um, for me, I was thinking, and, and uh, despite how I felt on the 7th of January, um, 2021, when Mr. Speaker, Right Honorable Kingsford Sumano, back then, was, 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 was elected uh, to preside over the proceedings in Parliament. I, I really felt very bad. But upon second thought, I thought uh, in, in, in such a situation, when you have those closeness in numbers, who else than the longest serving member of Parliament, than the man who was there when it all began, than the man who has, has all the experience, the man who has been Deputy Speaker, he's been Majority Leader, he's virtually been there, seen it and done it. So I, 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 I thought that with, with him being in the saddle, we're going to have um, a productive parliament, but it's proven otherwise. I don't understand. You mean the speaker is the cause of all these? Of course, for me, today, as I sit here, I will lay the, the blame barely at his, his Alaji, feet. what has the speaker done wrong? The speaker is saying that, and from his press, press um, program he had two days ago, he said that he has no ruled that those four seats are vacant. He has no ruled because he couldn't have ruled when this whole thing started as a statement and not a motion, subsequent to that, he is aware that the Supreme Court has begun proceedings that is asking him to stay it. But you see, at the press um, program that he held, he made certain specific statements that I find very, very, very worrying. Like what? Speaker says he believes in the supremacy of the Constitution not the Supreme Court. Our Constitution, that he believes in so much, says that the Supreme Court is the institution that would interpret all the provisions in the Constitution when people disagree on it. And what did the majority leader do? He disagreed on the interpretation or the spin or whatever, whether it was information, whether it was ruling, because when they went to the Supreme Court, which we all watched on TV, the speaker's lawyer, Tadio Sori was, say, was referring to a ruling by the speaker. At the presser, the speaker was telling us that he had no rule, that he had given information to parliament. The majority leader disagreed with the interpretation he put on articles 97, 1G and H. And so he went to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court says, look, stay whatever whatever, whether it was information, whether, whether, whether it was ruling. State, let the parties come. He, uh, he actually, actually uh, um, um, submit, submitted himself to the, to the Supreme Court. And there was a ruling challenging the, the, the initial, initial decision of the Supreme Court for him to stay that, 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 that ruling or what, what he wants us to believe now as information. And he lost. Now he's telling us that he believes in the Constitution, but not, he cannot subject himself to the Supreme Court. 
For God's sake, who is bigger than the Supreme Court in this country? Who? Everybody is subject, subject to the law. And if the Supreme Court has an ultimate, ultimate responsibility to interpret the provisions of this constitution, everybody is subject to the Supreme Court. How can he make such a statement? Didn't he make that I statement? Think that, I think that, and, and Alaji, that, didn't that he make, Alaji, didn't that he, didn't I want he, to, I want didn't to he to. make, didn't he make the statement at the same time saying that Parliament has been enclosed with the powers to be able to resolve whatever disagreement or difficulties. And as a result of that, that's why he says that he believes in the supremacy the, of the Constitution. To the extent that in a And indeed, act, even in the independence of to Parliament. The, to the extent that any act is contrary to the provisions of the Constitution, that act is, 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 is um, the lawyers have a term, that uh, <laughs> can, cannot, cannot, cannot stay. So in, in this case, look, for what has been happening in Parliament, I put the blame squarely at the feet of the Speaker. The How speaker can you made, say that? The speaker made 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 another made made, made another mm -hmm. attempt to to tell and to to want Ghanaians to believe that we are not in a constitutional crisis. But I think that he's plunged us into a constitutional crisis in a country like ours, where we know the three arms of 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 of, of government will have to be uh, to, uh, to will have to be running to make effective our our governance structure. Today, Parliament is, is disabled. Now, who cause him? The Speaker cause him. Why should it be the Speaker who takes the blame? Because, look, whatever, whatever changes is, is happening, whoever is majority, who is minority, he should be bold enough. He should be bold enough to give a ruling. He cannot hide behind whether it's the information he gave to the House, whether it, and that was the basis of whatever, whatever is happening. That is what started this whole standoff in Parliament. And, and uh, the other side, the NDC side, <laughs> sometimes I, I cringe at, at some of their actions. How can you candidly get into the chamber of parliament, remove the name tax of, of, of the other side, and then occupy a place that, <laughs> that, that you don't belong, that does not belong to What you. do you mean by clandestinely? But that's exactly is it, what he did it, yesterday. Is it one side that's of exactly the house that looks, yesterday. that looks after the chamber when you were a member of parliament? It is not. Okay. It is not. So but how you do you come recollect. by those conclusions? You could recollect that two days ago, when uh, the a question was posed to a speaker as to who, uh, who, who is majority, who is minority, he says he doesn't determine. And I, I think that, that that statement as well was very... <laughs> I'm, I'm, really, I'm really forcing myself not to use some words. I, I think that it was a very unfortunate statement coming from him. I think it was very, very unfortunate coming from him. He says that he's been engaged by institutions like the Council of State and other, other, other bodies trying to resolve the impasse in Parliament. And then he ends up singing to us that somebody did not come to him early and that his heart is broken and all of that. I think that, look, what is happening today in Parliament, every blame lies at the feet of the speaker and he is the guy who is plunging us into a constitutional crisis and I, just because of his his um his 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 his, 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 his political advantage he stands to gain look there's business government business to be done in parliament there is critical government business to be done in parliament and they think that they are getting some political advantage by staying government business happening in parliament and that's just what they are doing and it's very unfortunate that the speaker has allowed himself and the NDC to use the institution of parliament to gain political advantage going to and the, the How election. do you blame? But I'm sure Ghanaians are watching. How? Ghanaians are watching. Okay. Well, well, no, Ghanaians uh, are watching. Lawyer Apiadankwa, thank you for coming as well. Um, they're welcome. Um, very, very interesting. And, and Mr. Maliba, how does one come to a certain conclusion that it is the NDC side that is creating this rancor? When you know that specifically the recall over the last two, yesterday being the last, after the last adjournment, that side of the house had been in the chamber. And as a result of a lack of quorum, the speaker had done nothing but otherwise. And they are to be blamed. The speaker is damn right when he said that the constitution is supreme. Because the Supreme Court itself is under this constitution. And the Supreme Court cannot do anything outside this constitution. So the speaker was right when he said that 
He believes in the supremacy of the Constitution and not the Supreme Court. So if the Speaker feels that the Supreme Court is colluding with the government of the day to undermine Parliament, he has every right to say it. He has that right? Every right to say it. Why? Because he's the leader of Parliament, and if somebody is chipping away the building blocks of democracy, and you know that when they say a country is democratic, it's because there's a parliament, and not because there's judiciary, and not because there's an executive. It is because there's parliament. And if that blocks, those blocks are being chipped away, he has every right to protect it. But yesterday, eh? yesterday, Afenyo Markin exhibited immaturity. Immaturity? And if you have an immature leader... A leader of the house? And if you have a, an immature leader, this is what you have. Your side was the one that called for parliament to reconvene, isn't it? As we know. Ah. The least you could have done was just to enter the chamber and even be standing. If you were even going to be hanging one leg up and one leg down. That's erroneous. You get my point? The least you could do was to enter the chamber. Now, you refuse to enter the chamber. And you call the media, press men and women, and was uh, 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 hurling invectives on the speaker. Why didn't you enter the chamber and raise those concerns that you were raising with the media? He should enter the chamber as what? Majority leader. Mr. Uh, no, 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 no. When you, when you were no, no, speaking, no, no, no. Alaji. I know you're back from Mecca with a lot of him, but oh, Charlie, this strategy will not help. <laughs> no, no. Make you happy, I'm not happy. <laughs> Why don't you enter the chamber and raise those issues, even if you are going to be standing? Mm. I hear them say that Mr. Speaker should announce to the whole world that he's going to court, the court has refused his application, and that now they are the majority. Who does that? He's a lawyer. I'm a lawyer. He's also a lawyer. An applicant goes to court, mm -hmm. gets a stay, mm -hmm. and you say the respondent whose actions have been stayed by the court should now come and tell the whole world that uh, uh, my, my actions have been stayed. Who, who does that? Who does that? It is for the applicant who won the case to assert his right as per the court ruling. So they should have been... In the chamber. They should be in the chamber and say that. And, and, and then, then the, the, uh, the, the ruling of the last to be So, reversed. Mr. Speaker, Afanyo Maki will now be speaking this way. Mr. Speaker, as we are all aware, you try to overturn the ruling of the uh, court. The court has reaffirmed its position. We are in the man majority, but our colleagues have taken our side. That is what a matured. The way you say you make it look simple. Oh, that's, that's court. I've been doing this every day. So, so that's what should have been done, ideally. It's just like what? It's just like going to court. My Lord, you just say that. And you would have seen the number of Ghanaians who will be on your side. You don't behave immaturely. Particularly when you are the one who invited the parliament to sit. In any case, were they interested in doing government business? Why not? Because we were told. Because if you listen to Katie Hammond, uh -huh. Katie Hammond specifically tells the media, and that was yesterday, that per the ruling in the courts the last time by the Ch Chief Justice-led panel, it clearly shows that the Speaker should have taken cognizance of that ruling. And so in reconvening Parliament, that scenario should have been acknowledged, whereby the, there should have been the atmosphere, the presence, where the majority will be where they are, and not paint the picture that you're painting, that we should have an, the proceedings being reversed. I am shocked at him because I'm sure as a parliamentarian, he should have been telling the media which order of the parliament books. Order what? Order, say that. So I should, have been, I should have been hearing him. As old as, as it is, because he always insult the young men. As old as it is. And with his gray hair, he should have been telling the media, order 15, order 35 says that when the speaker goes to court and he's, he loses, he should come back 
and say this. What kind of behavior is that? Who tells him that? Look. Um, I hear, I hear the MPP say that, and that's all from uh, 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 Hamon, that, oh, they will cite the speaker. Katie Hamon. Katie Hamon. That they will cite the speaker. For contempt. For contempt. Eh? Mm. <laughs> Why will you cite somebody for contempt? There are two ways, or two reasons. One, because there was an order made by the court, and the person disregarded it. That's one. Two, or the person has said something, or written something, or has misconducted himself in such a way as to bring the image of the court into disrepute. Which of this has the speaker done? Which of this has the speaker done? Yes, sir. Which of this has the speaker done? The speaker, let's assume, I'm just going to assume because the speaker said he didn't even do it. Let's even assume, without admitting, that the speaker, the speaker, the speaker has ruled that the four should vacate their seats. The court said that that should stay. What does that mean? What it means is that the status quo reverts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Has any of the four people walked into parliament and the speaker said, go away? I don't get this people. You see, let me tell you, this country. You break the table. Oh. I'll buy one for you. <laughs> See, this country and its institutions do not belong to the, only, only the MPP. How glad do you make We have over the years been so emasculated to the extent that the MPP wants to think that this country and its institutions belong to them. How? You were sitting in your offices. Mr. Speaker should come and pull your hands and come and sit in the chamber. Was there time to meet or there was no time? Can you imagine MPs fighting over seats? Can you imagine MPs, grown-ups, fighting over seats? <laughs> if you go back home this evening and you ask your, your son whether he's gone to school, and he said, I go to school, but when I got there, another boy was sitting on my table, your chair, so I came back home. Now slap him. <laughs> that is the kind of what it is government business you want to conduct you listed things like free HSS and you have been using free HSS to be scaring Ghanaians what would Nkrumah say who gave us independence then we should be voting for the CPP you have to say every year every year free HSS free HSS Nkrumah who brought independence to this country we should have been voting for his party you hate free SHS. Your free HSS is it the only thing you that Ghanaians will eat? Hate free SHS. You have free HSS to do business in Parliament. You didn't come to business. It's not that we even have the budget to pass. Whatever it is, and but do you, and they, I, and they, stop talking. Don't and, stop doing that. Uh, and they blame the speaker. Look, do you know that yesterday they didn't? Please, even, please conclude. For I'll me. conclude. Do you know that yesterday they, they didn't even prepare the business of the day? So even if they had come, there was no business of the day. Do you know that? Did you did you hear, Mr. Speaker? He said that. There was no business of the day. Are these serious people? Are these MPs, MPs, MPP MPs, serious people who want business to be conducted in Parliament? You should come prepared. You didn't come prepared. And you are there now saying that is the NDC MP. Do you know that? Do you know that? Eh? Eh? Unofficially, NDC people are the majority in Parliament. Unofficially. Do you not come to Parliament? Even before this war, before this matter came out, the four MPs, they don't even come to power. It's the MPP, NDC MPs, who helped them to pass their things. We are number them. We outnumber them. Because what, they are on, on campaign? Yes, some of them are annoying. They, they are but the NDC too are campaigning. I'm saying that our numbers will come more than them. You are not understanding. Who is saying that nobody's campaigning? I'm saying that we, we, we populate. We populate the place. So even if we even decide, and if we want to, Cripple them. We can decide not also to come to power, and you can pass anything. You should, you should negotiate. Tell you that your boy after only happened oh, to stop. He's not your boy. He's. A... I'm older than him. Yeah, I'm older than him. I'm I telling understand. him. I'm older than him. I think I'm, I'm, I'm almost ten years older than him. I'm his senior too. But he's and I'm lead, saying that he's leading, he's the leading them. Course, yeah. And I'm saying that you should tell him I to understand. ensure that there is negotiation, there is some rapprochement, and not to be throwing tantrums. Please bring some water for um, Maliba, the way he's up, up, up. Look, 
you, you you witness what transpired yesterday by order of procedure you do a recall of the speaker's press conference you could see that he was amenable amenable to acknowledge the ruling of the courts i was thinking and you listen you listen to a number of um, uh, uh, people within the domain and they say because there was a proceeding where an action was taken or a pronouncement was made there needed to be proceedings yesterday started and then the actions of the previous time reversed but that was not undertaken but then on the other side afenyo Markin and the mpp koko say the speaker should have acknowledged that this is the ruling of the supreme court in the ongoing case what do you say to that so let me wish you yourself a good morning thank you, <laughs> thank you. i'm hot the way everybody is banging uh, the you table need, you need, you need, is, is blasting me amaliba is also blasting you need, me you need ice <laughs> <laughs> wish my liverpool friend here mm. <laughs> you're what my liverpool. liverpool friend are you a liverpool supporter yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right a good morning my own big brother a good morning my senior my senior needs a lot of water <laughs> senior calm down what uh, uh, you see I think the starting point mm -hmm. for this discussion mm -hmm. is to acknowledge mm -hmm. that there has been a fundamental lack of integrity. A fundamental lack of There has been a fundamental, fundamental lack, lack of, of integrity. integrity. Where yeah, and yeah. why? A fundamental lack of, of integrity shown by the by the by the by the MPs, yeah. as in the four MPs. And that's the reason we are where we are, not because of anything the speaker has done, contrary to what my big brother Alaji is, is saying. Because, no. you see, if you read Article 971G, I think it's clear, and you see that order, Article 971 G. you see, the, the, the terms of that order is not to you, it's not to me, it's not to Amaliba, mm. it's not to the speaker. It's to an MP. It's to the member. You, 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 you understand, and it's, and, and and the 971 G is asking them the way you change your party. It's clear. I, I, I don't know. You didn't say a future member of parliament. No, it's, it's a current member of parliament. It's, it's clear. You understand? Okay. Now they've shown a fundamental lack of integrity by not living. So I think that should be the starting point, and that's the reason we are where so we are you because. Resign from parliament. No, the please read it for me. Article 971G, a member of parliament shall vacate his seat in parliament if he leaves the party of which he was a member at the time of his election to parliament to join another party or seeks to remain in parliament as an independent member. Yes. And yes, seeks. Uh, 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 yes, and so the, the, that clause article is directed at the MP. Yes, and so what this article explains that where you flout any of these things, you yourself should vacate. Automatic. Oh. Yeah, automatic. But yesterday I saw Cynthia Morris in there. Oh. And that's what I'm saying. There's a fundamental lack of integrity. Now, too, and that's just to correct the statement my Liverpool big brother here said. That the <laughs> reason we are where we are is because of and NPP, this. NPP brotherhood. Oh no, I'm not NPP. I, I, no, you no. were. <laughs> I was, but I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> my, <laughs> you understand? You say he has left. The oh, I've left. I've left. By virtue of an article in their constitution, that's I say. There's a fundamental lack of integrity. Also, from the MPP, because from their constitution, it says that if you put yourself up for election, you mean your former party's constitution? Listen, mm -hmm. you stop referring to former, former, former. <laughs> Look forward. <laughs> I <laughs> keep calling me a former MP, so it's okay. My <laughs> no, you can't. Uh, yeah. Look for it. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm no longer there. You understand? <laughs> <laughs> they are constitution that that is clear that if you put yourself up against a candidate that their party has sponsored, then automatically you have forfeited your membership. Automatically, automatically, you don't need the MPP to write any letter mm -hmm. to you. Contrary to the argument, they you've already to, left the party. You've left. So you shouldn't be representing them. And and you see, they, they keep on saying that, mm -hmm. in spite of that clause, huh, you need a letter from their national council before. You be deemed to have left or not. That's the argument they're making, and and that's the reason why okay. they, they 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 claim what the speaker did was was it was wrong. Also, what was the basis of what the speaker did? You, you understand? What was the basis for what the the, the, the speaker did? The, uh, the speaker paid their own standing orders. 
standing orders which were promulgated based on the constitution of Ghana, because the constitution tax parliament to enact uh, uh, what's called orders, which will govern their own processes. You, 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 you understand? So when the speaker was acting, he was acting based on the outstanding order. Thirdly, I think we cannot have a debate on that. The constitution is supreme. There's absolutely no debate about, about that. But can you make an argument that because the constitution is supreme, then the Supreme Court is supreme? Because to say that is to make an argument which will be adverse to the purpose of our constitution. Really? Because the purpose of our constitution is to limit powers of government. It's not just the powers of the executive which mm. are limited. Mm. It's not just the powers of the legislature which are limited. Mm. But also the powers of the Supreme Court, of the judiciary, are also limited by the constitution mm. itself mm. Uh, and by their own processes. Because we need to understand that the essence of the system of government we choose upon ourselves is to guarantee us the rule of law. The rule of law. And one of the abiding principles of the rule of law is the certainty of the law. You understand? So, we all know that the Supreme Court keep on saying that they are not even bound by their own procedure. But by reason of the rule of law, mm -hmm. the Supreme Court should not be seen to be flip-flopping and today because you can do so today A, same facts. Today say A, tomorrow you, you will say B. You, 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 you understand? Because we know how the Supreme Court handled the case of Judge Equation, mm -hmm. where an injunction application was brought before it, before the main matter itself was held, the interpretation issue was held. And how the Supreme Court injuncted Judge Equation from representing his constituents until until the final determination. And yet the Supreme Court was quick and, and, and not but you see not until the argument they made, the argument they made in, in staying was so that people's Ghanaians in, in those four constituencies will be without representation. But that was the principle. In this one. So where was that principle in the judge question one? And so we say that rule of law, certainty of the law. But I don't understand. Are you accusing the Supreme Court of double standards? Uh, what I'm saying is that I disagree with their decision. But having said that, you cannot also say that because you are the, you disagree with the decision of the court, you are not going to abide by by sin. And that's why the court itself has ways in which you can challenge their own decision. They have review ju ju jurisdiction. They have appellate jurisdiction and all. And nothing the the, the speaker has done suggests to me that he intends or he is disobeying the orders of... But that's what the MPP is saying. And, and that, that's what I'm saying. That's, my, that, that, that's what they are saying. But I'm saying that nothing he has done suggests to me that he is disobeying the orders of the, of, the, of, the, of the Supreme Court. Because at the end of the day, the MPP MPs, mm, confirming how I see them, as being people who do not have any loyalty, any fidelity, any commitment to the purpose and reason for which we granted them the powers we granted them. You, you, you understand? Because they are not representing themselves. They are not representing their political parties. They are representing the people of Ghana. You, you, you understand? And so it's not an excuse to say that because you anticipate that there will be some confusion as to where you sit, you, 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 you derelict your obligation to the people of this country. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, understand? And, 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 and then have the cockroach audacity to turn around and accuse the speaker of what? Cockroach audacity? The temerity, the cockroach audacity. You want me to add more adjectives? Mm -hmm. <coughs> cockroach audacity? You want me to add more adjectives? I find your adjectives Pagnacious probably. Pagnacious audacity. Pagnacious. Pagnacious audacity. Pagnacious. Pagnacious. This one is actually more than English. Uh, uh, when the president okay. people, you want to copy me. Hey, Dr. Diaz, you want to copy me. Please wrap up for me. You, you, you understand? <laughs> you see, I, I, I'm, I'm very disappointed. And I've said it and I'll say it here. If our politicians don't take care, mm. if the people of Ghana do not rise up and become interested and participate in this a democracy, these people, eh, especially the people from the MPP side, who in their communication tell me that they have no commitment to the, to the rule of law because they keep on saying 
uh, uh, the color NPO to sit on his file, uh, they, they, they make those arguments that in spite of the clear terms of their constitution, mm. their national council reserves the right to arbitrary, you understand, apply the, their, their constitution in a manner different from the intent of the, of the mm. constitution. Because if, if your constitution is saying that, should you contest against anybody, the party is mm. sponsoring, mm -hmm. automatically you lose your candidate, your membership, and that's not the national council reserves the right. That means that they themselves do not have no respect for the rule of law. You, 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 you understand? Mm. You understand? Also, after the speaker's speech on Wednesday, a speech whose focus to refocus the MPs, the politicians, to their commitment to the purpose for this constitutional democracy we took upon ourselves. Indeed, he made reference to the oath of allegiance they took. One, to be faithful to Ghana, to, to protect, preserve, and defend the constitution. You understand? Now, now when the constitution says that you, you would take an oath to preserve, defend, and protect the constitution of Ghana, in that sense, what you are saying is that you are going to defend, protect, and defend the purpose of the constitution of Ghana, which is to protect our lives, our liberties, and our right to pursue our own happiness. And a recognition that the only way we can do that is to create a system of governance mm. that can guarantee us the rule of law. You, 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 you understand? And after, after my view, a statement that was supposed to calm tempest, you understand? Remind you of the oath you took, remind you of your obligations to Ghana and to the constitution. The MPP, MPs go and play coliko like children. They go and play coliko. Like children. What they did was playing coliko like children, like in Kola, like children, rowdy, rudy children. You understand? See, the people of, we, on 7 December, we are going to, to, uh, to, uh, to make a decision. You think this will influence voters? It should. Because I'm saying that the How? way they are behaving... They accuse the speaker. They accuse what? So you, are you happy with what is happening? Are, are you it not a Ghanaian? Oh, Mama, you, you, are, you, are, you are my dog. 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 You are You are my dog. 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 You see, if they if they care about Ghana, they'll do what my senior here is is suggesting. Is, 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 and they are lawyers. They are, I think back it was Magina one year. They are senior lawyers. Go to parliament. Quietly sit where let's say the NDC people because they've gone for earlier um, and then raise an issue on the floor of parliament. And then by order of procedure. Yeah, yeah raise an issue that my lord, okay, based right. on the decision of the Supreme Court with we think A B C D. In fact, you you will even be placing the ball in the in the speaker's court. So based on what the speaker does, then you can make those allegations. So you're saying the speaker was waiting for that? Exactly. The, 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 the speaker gave a speech on Wednesday, a fantastic speech, a speech which, in my opinion, edges edges his name in gold. When his when posterity is looking back to all this nonsense that our generation we are doing, he, the speaker's name will mention as the few people who had the courage to stand for democracy for the rule of law. It's, in fact, of the, 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 that fantastic speech he made, which should have calmed tempest, which should have refocused and caused them to recommit themselves to the rule of law, to the constitution. They instead did the Coleco game they did, which for me has cemented that belief that if we allow these people, then people will cause. They'll, 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 they'll change our democracy into a catastrophe. The people of Ghana need to wake up. I don't understand why you keep using Coleco, Coleco. Ah, it's Coleco, it's not Coleco. Cheche Kule and all that. He didn't say Cheche Kule, Cheche Kule is your own place. Sorry. And he wants to, he wants to. Loa Jantua. Loa Jantua. Cheche Kule can't survive. Loa Jantua. Where we are, do you think that an opportunity has been lost? Looking at the press conference that the speaker undertook or held, and for which perhaps tomorrow, if we had the presence of the MPP caucus in parliament, we could have had a turnaround for this impasse. Roland. Sir. Where do the different arms of government <coughs> derive their power from? From the constitution. The constitution. Apart from the constitution, where do they derive their power the from? The people. Huh? The people of Ghana. The people of Ghana come before the constitution. No be so? Yes. Because it's the people of Ghana who vote people into different parts of governance. And it's the constitution that does what? Governs. It's very unfortunate, very, very unfortunate that 
parliament, the judiciary, and the presidency huh, are disregarding the will of the people. The people of Ghana voted for this parliament to be like this, didn't they? If you feel you have been voted to come into parliament and you can't handle the will of the people, get out! Simple, simple. But they said you are raising germane issues. Please, please, please. First sitting, what happened? Parliament was suspended. You would have thought if the people of Ghana were thought of, right? They would go behind closed doors and find a solution. Nobody so. Find a solution. So that when Parliament was called a second time, we would not go through what we've gone through and then suspend Parliament indefinitely. Because they don't respect us as people. I would have thought, eh? I would have thought, if for nothing at all, hmm? the president will call the speaker, will call the chief justice, will call the council of state, and will call some prominent chiefs. Sit down. Guys, guys. What we are doing, we are breaking the democracy of this country. Stop it. Let's find a way to handle the situation. It's gone to court. What did the speaker say? The speaker said that the responsibility of uh, uh, <coughs> the court eh, ends at... <coughs> Ends at is it the nose of parliament? The where the nose of parliament yes, begins. Yes, mm -hmm. where the nose of parliament begins. And the speaker was right when he indicated in his statement that the current bruhaha may be christened as a power play between the arms of government. He was right. Why can't he be right? Why can't he be right? <laughs> the speaker is saying, Executive, <laughs> I have brought bills to you. To ascend to as executive and there are rules and regulations that cover these bills in the term in terms of its process if you do not agree to sign to this bill bring it back to me eh, according to the, the, the process give me reasons why you don't want to and then we see how we go from it but you pass it on to the, the judiciary and you say that I'm going to wait for the judiciary to make a decision. So it goes to the judiciary. It goes to the Supreme Court. How many weeks and months has it taken the Supreme Court to look at that particular issue? Has it happened? It hasn't happened. And we don't even know whether it will happen. Why is this important? Why is it important? Because it has public interest. Doesn't it? And that is where the people come in. It has public interest and things that have public interest should be taken seriously by the arms of government. So if the speaker says there seems to be power play between uh, the arms of government, one can acquiesce to it that it can be true, can't it? Now, uh, Roland, what is going on? There aren't people who can speak to issues like this. Then what would happen? And this is what I'm urging Ghanaians. Eh? This election. Vote one party parliament. Vote one party executive. Vote one party to be majority in parliament. And the other to be executive. And let's see. Because you see, one thing that this parliament has shown. Has has shown that. There are certain things that we've overlooked in the past because we had majority in parliament. So we passed everything, just railroad it. But this has shown that there are certain things that we need to be very mindful of. Because such a parliament, eh, there should be consensus. There should be collaboration because of the numbers. Is there consensus? Is there collaboration? In parliament today, 
And who is suffering? Is the people? Aren't there bills to be passed in Parliament? And because they can't come to consensus, is it being passed? And I agree with uh, AB. So who do we blame? Listen, um, it's, it's not a blame game. It is a misunderstanding. I agree with AB when he said the MPP should have walked into Parliament. Eh? You say you won't sit where opposition is. Stand. Stand. And let the speaker eh, then use his power to decide. You said you've called Parliament. We've come. There are some people st sitting in our seats. Okay. So we want Parliament to go on because we are here to represent the people. So let's go. We will stand. And if it's uncomfortable for the speaker, the speaker will say, hmm. We need to sort this out. The speaker says it's not his, his matter to do that. But they would have forced the speaker to act there for Ghanaians to see. No, you can't give me two minutes. You get these five. You get this ten. They're telling me two minutes. What's that, Roland? Stop it. Is that incapricious? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know whether the people at the back are telling him to stop me. Nobody's telling. There are. Eh? And with this entire thing, there, there is precedence in some of the areas eh, that no action was taken. Ajwa Safo was action taken when the speaker decided that if she's absented, then she would have to lose her seat. Well, it was taken to was it the taken, privilege. Was it, uh, privilege, was it taken to the High Court according to the Constitution? But you could have taken it. No, 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 please. Enough, please. Yeah. Please, please. Allah, you don't be interjecting. Judge your question. Judge question. Judge question. What happened? Yeah. Sal, what happened? Did it go to the Supreme Court or did it go to the High Court? So what is different with this one? What is different with this one? Look, sometimes the MPP makers feel that Ghana is theirs. Hmm? Sometimes they don't bring the people first. This was How did you this, do wait, well, this was a right example. For, and you ask the question, what can be, how can we, the how do we resolve it? And I'm saying, the, 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 the look, initially, yeah. when uh, the, the, the majority leader walked out, I agreed with him because he didn't want any chaos because we've seen chaos before in parliament he didn't want any chaos you mean the last sitting the last parliament. sitting yes he didn't want any chaos now this one too they had called parliament they they, they had a responsibility to do what to make sure that they heeded to the call of parliament because they called parliament walking stand because you have called parliament but you didn't even appear who have you insulted wasn't the whole Ghana waiting to see that eh, Parliament is going to be recalled and the Speaker went according to the rules and regulations of Parliament, didn't he? And called Parliament. The business committee didn't even sit to even put business on the table. For the Speaker to say, we have business in front of us. But the Speaker said, there is no business to discuss. So even if he wanted to discuss that business with those in Parliament, because he did say there was a caucus, didn't he? To, to, to even discuss with them. Would he have been able to discuss with them? But you called Parliament. Isn't that an insult to the people of Ghana? I thought Afenyo Markin should walk in with his crew, stand and debate while standing. All Ghanaians will see. But, you know, I feel N NDC, You've made your point. Everybody has seen your point. Please bring Ghanaians first. Huh? There are bills in Parliament that need to be discussed, that affect the people. Huh? You want me to run through them? No, we don't have time to run through them. But there are bills, pertinent bills, that would help the people. I beg, NDC, if for nothing at all, how many days is it for Parliament to rise? How many more days? Eh? Let's, let, let's go back to the status quo and for the sake of the people let's try and pass these bills mm. and stop the otherwise what I would then suggest is that uh, they should now rise and not come back again we don't till, have a budget to run well, the well then, so they should, they should know that mm. shouldn't they know that All right. are they children are they playing gutter to gutter football are they playing chaskele 
It's the people who are important. People, people who put you there are the important ones. Mind the people. Now, people are using this month? Mind people, the people. Because, 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 eh, he, hmm? gossip, eh, he, gossip. what is happening is too infantile. All right. Stop it. All right. Uh, Alaji, Alaji, um, how do we resolve this? See, because now Roland, we have an non -pass. Roland, Roland, I keep hearing the majority side should have entered into the chamber. They should have stood they should have argued their case you see when you enter into the chamber of parliament you are either on the right side or the left hand side of the speaker but even with the main chamber despite this horseshoe design you are recognized as either being on the left or the right so you are asking them to enter or get into the chamber and stand where are you telling us that you expect them to go and take their rightful places where those machineries or uh, the, 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 the NDC had gone in and removed the attacks and what, fight with them? Honorable Afedjan Markin, the majority leader and his side have, has made it clear to Ghanaians that they are not going to involve themselves in any fisticuffs or any fights in the chamber. No, we, we are beyond that and we are going to use the right channels, we are going to use the law to claim our rightful place in, within the chamber of, of, of parliament. Look, you can get into the chamber. Do whatever you want. If the speaker decides not to recognize you, you will have no, no basis. You have no other opportunity. Has the, has the See, speaker decided? I said if. I said if. And we, we, we gauge the posture of the speaker from oh. his press, from his press statement, from the things he said there, that he doesn't determine who, where people sit within the chamber. He's supposed to be presiding, presiding over the proceedings of parliament. And you expect. So you're saying and his, I still, his, I still own, his own utterances and position don't his give him was clear. confidence. His posture was clear. Mm -hmm. And when people even stretch this to say that he is in contempt of the Supreme Court, I tend to agree with the people to an extent. He is in contempt. Of course, it? because the Supreme Court had given a ruling. Stay, let the status quo. The status quo with the, the current situation I continue understand. until we have the ruling mm -hmm. from the Supreme Court. So. And if the NDC MPs are actually people who agree or who people who actually who actually wanted to go by the ruling of the Supreme Court, right? They had no business getting into the chamber. Taking off the uh, name tax throughout the period, the NDC caucus has always been the, uh, been present in the chamber. They have been it there, is the but they have, have sat in the wrong place. And I'm saying that when you get into so the is chamber the of parliament, problem? when you get into the chamber of parliament, mm. you are either on the right or left. There is no indicating, middle ground. Indicating there is no middle ground. Minority. You recollect when Samia Nkrumah was member of parliament and she decided not to sit with either side, they, there was a ruling in parliament, you have to belong to one side. Where do you expect the, 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 the majority side to move that and do? Do you expect them to go and physically engage the people who have annexed their seats? The MPP and the majority side stand, stand where? Stand where? That you can't stand in the middle within the chamber. Even if you want to stand, stand you will stand period. on the left side or the right side. And the rightful place for the majority is the right side. If these people have illegally annexed their places, and we are saying that, look, we won't get into the chamber and engage anybody in a fight. If that is what the NDC wants, we won't. So why did they call? We them? won't. Why did they that call? is that is a why grand star. Getting into the elections, that getting into the why elections. Did they call this parliament? is a stance there, they and the NDC it. wants why to. Why do they get but we, but we are not going to engage in that. We know that there is business to be done. And people, they talk about business. Let's wrap yes. up for me. There's, there's always a business committee meeting before proceedings of parliament starts. In this case, it was very clear what the business that parliament had to attend to. And the majority leader had given the, 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 the indication mm. for the other paper to be printed. Mm. That is enough for the business, business committee to, 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 to go right. on. And he is also... The chair of Charlie, the I'm getting a lot of in messages parliament. coming in. This one is coming in from parliament. Chairman so Prosper, who, else, who else decides? I disagree done, with lawyer Kwame Janswa that Ghanaians should vote for a president of a different party 
and a composition of a parliament made up of another party. That will even worsen the current problem. We should learn. Just look at the learn. status quo, where the Speaker of Parliament, through procedures of parliament that was live on various television stations, including TV3, went through a process. There was a ruling by an arm of government, the Supreme Court doing that. Shouldn't we have seen the parliament starting proceedings, the speaker presiding and reversing the ruling or the order, being the acknowledgement of the order of the Supreme Court? Rather, we see one side of the house that decides to boycott and rather goes on sloganeering with the press and insulting the speaker. That leads me to my question. The current posture where there's the back and forth, the top back at the speaker, etc. What do you think that would have based on an effect on trying to find a middle ground? If, let's say, you create animosity and, you know, the speaker, the words that are being... You see, when there was a lull mm -hmm. and the speaker adjourned and there was a lull, mm. I, I thought that the Afrenian Markings group... Yes. Mm, would have reached out. Yes. I thought that was a period where they could have engaged and ensure that when they recall Parliament, matters would have been dealt with before they even come to Parliament. But let me say that there is no majority in this Parliament, the AFPAL, there's no majority. There's a majority ah. side. So you see that you have you have, so you have seen that you've come clearly as <laughs> A reasonable person. No majority. And somebody party. has come clear as somebody else. <laughs> so there's no majority in this parliament. There's no majority, and I'm saying the theater, there's no majority. And I'm right. Ah. There's only one How three, there's a majority leader then. Oh. Oh. There's Allergy. one three seven and one three seven. Plus However, the speaker ruled that because the second deputy speaker would be doing business with the MPP. He then coined a word as majority minority. caucus or majority side group. or majority that's group, that's whatever it is. So there's no majority in this parliament. There's no majority at all. So the MPP should not be insisting on their pound of flesh as if the people of this country made their majority. The people of this country never, ever made a majority. Now... The next thing is this, and I want to tap into something that my senior brother has said. It is in times of crisis that great leaders emerge. In times of crisis, that is when you see great leaders. Emerge. Can you imagine the optics? Nana Adodanko Akufado. What has he done to you? Leader of the country. Calling Mr. Speaker. But you are not privy to attempts. Oh, yeah, Jama said, Jawa Sam. When they are talking, they are talking sense. They want to resolve matter. You are doing this. Jawa Sam. Jawa Sam. He's a former member of Fire. That is it. He should leave it. But he has an interest. But he has his time. Okay, okay. He should die, Sam. You see optics. The president calling them to the flag tower. I was in the Jubilee House. And there are cameras. You see. And that's how great leaders work, oh. Yes. You see the minority leader, you see Mr. Speaker, you see the Afenio market, you see uh, uh, at the Council person. of State. You see Council of State. Of state. Ah. Then, uh, that's one side, though. Eh? On the other side, you see the MPP chairman dealing with the NDC chairman at wherever it is, even if it's Aliza Hotel. This is what great leadership do for a country. Is that what you want? What are you president for, if you can't solve problems? And if we are in this but quagmire, you know the attempts is made. Oh, oh, this guy should just look. People are serious. You ignore him. Ignore. Ah. And if you are in this quagmire, and there was this period of a lull, you only had the council of elders making overtures. That is not enough. Not enough. That's not enough. The the council of elders for once have done well, but this time we need more of it. If and I've told people that. The Supreme, those who think that the Supreme Court can solve this matter, the Supreme Court cannot solve this matter. The fact that you have ruled doesn't mean that human beings will follow it. Hey. You understand? 
And if that were the case, and I was here, and I made, and I gave an example, the Yana situation is a two four, even though there's a ruling. Today, Boko, there are court rulings on Boko, has a conflict stopped. So, you need people to move away from the mm. legalese, law, 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 and deal with each other and talk. Yes. And talk. You, you believe that the kind of talk. It, it's a, it's a, it's a political talk. disagreement. What if it is wrong? If, if Muhammad use a phone and call, uh, 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 I said Muhammad, uh, Akufado, and call <laughs> Muhammad. Akufado calls uh, Muhammad and say, look, what is happening? Can we go about it? But there's no leadership. The man has checked out. The man has checked out. Country is an autopilot. This country is on autopilot. There's no leadership. How can you make those conclusions? I heard him say that by the minority, uh, uh, Mark, uh, uh, the uh, uh, NDC sitting on the right hand side, they don't respect the ruling of the court. How? How can you say that? Where the minority parties in the court, the parties are uh, Afenyomak and the speaker. They are the ones. So what the, my, uh, uh, the NDC MPs are doing, they have not flattered any law. Mm. They are not parties to the suit. Hey, point of order. They are only acting based on the ruling by the speaker. speaker. Roland, okay. Roland, just one, one, one yeah, quick question. The speaker says Roland, he has no rule. You, you, have, you have your time. Roland, just, the speaker uh, says he has no three rule. Minutes, I beg you. It was information. I, I, I need rules. to read some messages before. Yeah, so let me just give it. Because he too, he spent three. three. Only uh, he I mean, took four minutes. I know, he spent five. Two, you five. I have this one. I have this one from Obrim Ponkaba. He's a regular watcher on the show. He says... Please ask your panelists what a member of parliament in Article uh, 97 means. I hope it doesn't mean a parliamentary candidate. <laughs> they cannot attempt to use the Supreme Court to amend Article 97 to satisfy their own interests. While they agree with Article 97 in their own constitution. Oh, this is now, rough. We have said this. Uh, uh, okay. So how do we come to some conclusions on this matter? Who do we need to call? How do we make sure the next time where parliament reconvenes, we don't have a disagreement, a walk out. You see, three minutes. I hope this matter can be resolved. I think my senior brother here gave a great submission, which is very patriotic. Uh, oh, uh, my, 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 my senior brother, Jantua. Wafa Jantua. Wafa Jantua. My own, Wafa Wafa Jantua. He is my senior brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You understand? These people, they don't have a gun now. They don't care about it. See, they are focused, and that's why I made reference to the speaker's speech, where he was refocusing their mind to the oath they took, to the purpose mm. of the powers we uh, we give them. But that's not their concern. That's not what fools fools them. Ah, we don't have uh, clear. There's a fundamental lack of leadership, like Amaliba rightly said. There's a lack of integrity. We have politicians who are very parochial. You understand? Who because how can you convince me that the reason why you refuse to go to parliament mm, to represent your people to advance the business of government mm, is because of where you are going to sit? You understand? That argument is sad. And it reaffirms my belief that we are we are heading towards a catastrophe. You supposing the NDC people are, are, are reluctant, they, they say they'll be. How does that stop you where you are sitting from discharging your duty to your constituents, to the people of Ghana? How, how should that stop you? You, 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 you? So, listen, there's a fundamental lack of appreciation, or in fact, appreciation is too nice a word, of fidelity. You understand? To the principles, to the principles of this constitutional democracy. There's a fundamental lack of fidelity to Ghana as a country. There's a fundamental lack of fidelity to their duty to protect Ghana, the people of Ghana. And, and I think that is the issue. Yeah, 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 you understand? So we all hope there'll be some conclusion to this matter. But I don't think there'll be that conclusion and there won't be that conclusion because 
we are increasingly heading towards a kakistocracy. This is where you don't care about you. You don't care about the country. You don't care about democracy. You don't care about the rule of law. Right. All they care about is how do we sustain ourselves in power. Yeah, That's what they care about. I want to read that. Them people especially. Do you think if Osei Chen has a majority leader this thing would have extended this far oh how are you saying that Afenyu martin hasn't learned from i say chairman from, Sabonso, from Len Sabonso. Go straight to the speaker and sit with him and discuss with him in terms of the people of ghana he said it in his interview he said it oh, he says. would go yes so so chairman Sabonso, yes that you are saying if go. it was Osei Chairman Sabu yes. leading the MPP side, this would have been different. It would have been different. How? It would have been different. Look, look, look. Television is a very strong medium. It's a very strong medium. They should stop playing to the cameras of the television and deal with the situation. And if it takes the president to come in, he should come in. Because what? His party is there, isn't it? They are coming back to us to ask us for our vote, aren't they? They should do what the people want and solve this matter. Otherwise, the speaker should just suspend parliament for this year hey. till we go to elections. If that is what also they want. The budget, the, the budget for uh, uh, what is it? 2025. 2025 is important. Do they not see it? It's not see so if you are sitting on another side and they are sitting on the other side, they say they are majority are married. So what? And they go for the buy it. Does that stop you from doing the work that you're supposed to do? All right. You are, they are handcuffing the, the government, the executive. And the executive wants to be handcuffed. So they're also not saying anything about it. But it is wrong to the people of Ghana. We voted you in there and we expect you to do the work you're supposed to be All doing. Right. Period. This is a creation of the speaker. All right. Any NDC. So I have this one from Sam George, who is monitoring. So Sam George, good morning to you. He says that the president the is part of the problem. He has allowed his ego to worsen the situation. His actions are what is encouraging the minority leader, Penyo Marquez, to behave the way he is behaving. Two weeks ago, the Speaker of Parliament hosted the Conference of Speakers and Heads of Parliament in Ghana. He continues, the president was a guest of honor with... Over 30 speakers in attendance, the president snubbed the speaker to spite him. The president has failed and has shown absolutely no leadership. This impasse would never have gotten here if Chairman Sabunsu was leader of the MPP caucus. Having Apenyo and the likes of Katie almost threatens the speaker of parliament and turn around to seek the speaker to Katao. We say Koto, but it's, it's, it, the rice man says Kowtow. <laughs> to the aquims and caprices Sam is Sam juvenile. Judges they judges should ask the chief justice to come and preside for them since she has become their fairy godmother. Remember when uh, wow. Tiff asked you to go to court? His wow. brother or sister is a judge. I, I read this because he's a member of parliament. Yes, he's but entitled. it's one-sided. I think that you should I, have I, verified. He went on to say no, that I'm, I'm, the president, the president I, I, ignored I, I, the, the, I, the 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 the. Yeah, the, it's, the it's, from, it's from him. Oh, so he was there. Um, the president was there. Was where? Was where? Akogan says on the.